Welcome to Artistic Adventures. We're on part two of our Marie Antoinette doll project, and in this video, we're going to be working on that elaborate court dress. Okay, so let's get started working on this dress. First of all, I'm just going to show you how I came up with the design. I'm not going to sew each individual piece on camera because it, it's tedious and it'll take forever. So I'm just going to show you how I envisioned this going together and then uh, I'm going to do some of the sewing off camera. Okay. So the first thing I did is I wanted to make sure that um, that we have this part of the dress fitted. And I usually work with a uh, paper towel <laughs> for my pattern. So what I did is to make a piece that I think will sort of cover this side portion and then um, so I have two of those and then I and I wanted to also make sure that it's an, there's enough material to sew a seam okay so I have to envision that this will actually be about one fourth inch around smaller than it really is so I also have to have room up here to tuck it under and make a, a a waistband and then enough here to sew to uh, the additional part of the skirt okay so I've got two of these pieces on either side and then um, I want to make the front part of the dress come down to a point and because I want to have this look finished I'm going to cut two of these front pieces sew this part together sew the neckline together and then turn it so that those pieces are finished and then the, these uh, side pieces will be open and be able to sew that to the the back side of the dress. So I have to envision here that you know this is going to go around her and have about a one fourth inch seam. So that's kind of how I measured that. And I think I have enough uh, that if it's a little bit too big, I can always you know take it in or whatever. Now the the bodice is on the Marie Antoinette's dresses were very fitted up here but she doesn't have much of a bosom these poor <laughs> monster high dolls have really small bosoms so um, it's not gonna look exactly like those dresses but um, we're gonna give it the flavor of those dresses okay so then um, for the back of the dress I'll just do a piece like this but I added on to this side so I can turn it under but you can see that you know this will be a good half half of the back and I'll cut two of these and then um, I cut a sleeve I want it to be sort of a, a really poofy I'm thinking a sleeve sort of like um, Princess Diana's wedding dress if you remember that she had this really poofy sleeve with a, a nice gather so I'm thinking about doing that. Okay, so once we have these uh, panels on the skirt part, then what I did was make, let me put this up here so you can see. Okay, so this would be up here. And then for the front, I'm going to cut a piece like this that will sew to these edges of this part that was going to cover the, the side. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. And then for the back, because I need it to have an opening where we can pull this off of the doll, I'm going to do two pieces with enough material here to fold under, but do the same thing as the front. Okay, so then when we have all this top part covered, then I took a piece and measured to sew onto this top part and then it'll just be a front and a back piece like this or so two of these pieces if you can see all right so I went ahead and cut all that out this week while I uh, when I came home from work as you can see I have all the pieces here and I've already applied the fray check and I wanted to tell you I learned that it's a little bit better when you're looking at oh, I dropped my hold on a second when you're applying fray check, the problem I've had is that it will bleed. If you're applying it with the bottle, it'll bleed into the fabric and sort of mess up 
the look because it does leave a little bit of a stain. So what I did for these pieces is I took this paintbrush, put a little piece, a little drop of the um, fray check on this lemon of foil, and then I just went around and put and used the paintbrush to put the fray check on, and that worked a lot better. It, it's not fading into the rest of the fabric, and uh, it looks like it went on pretty evenly. If you can tell, it's just a little bit darker. So it's right around the edges. So I've done all the different pieces, skirts over here. And what I'm going to do now is start by attaching these two side pieces to the front and the back of the skirt, as I showed you on the paper towels. So I'm going to do some of that uh, off camera, and then we'll come back and see how that works. OK, so I've sewed the front part to these side panels and I just want to show you how that looks so it's it's just curved around there and then when we turn it then it actually looks like it's gonna work <laughs> I never know how these things are gonna turn out but this one looks like it's going to be good so far so that'll be the front part and now I'm gonna sew the back part onto the curved and I'll be back in a moment Okay, now I've sewed the back part on, and I did hem these two sides so that there'll be a, there'll be a finished edge when we turn it. So it's going to look like that, and then we'll put it on the doll like this, and let's see, I make sure I got it on there right. Okay. Alright, so this way, when I sew it to the bottom skirt, I'm going to overlap the back just a little bit. So we'll have an opening, and I can put a little piece of Velcro on that. Alright, so that's our top part of the skirt. So the next thing I'm going to do is sew the skirt to the bottom of this, and then I'm going to do a, a finishing piece around the bottom. I'll show you in just a minute. Okay, so stay tuned for the next section. Bye. Okay, so I've sewed this part on all the way around. And this will be the basically the underskirt of this dress. Uh, we'll finish up this in a, you know near the end and because we have some layers to put down. And I wanted to show you um, this picture, whoa, there she is. How did I get over there? All right, so in this particular dress, there really seems to be about four layers. So you've got this, oh, come on. What'd I do? Okay. All right, so there's this part that's the underdress, which is going to be this. Then there's this layer, which is like looped up at intervals. Then there's this layer which has these poofy gathers kind of around it. And then there's another layer of sort of side loops that go over. So that's like four four layers. And we're not going to do that. That'd be a whole lot for this little doll. So <laughs> I can only imagine how heavy this particular dress was on Marie. So what we're going to do is we're going to do probably three layers. We're going to do a layer like this, which will loop down just to the edge of this, and we're going to put some lace on the bottom here instead of a, however this is. And then we'll do two side swoops because uh, a lot of the dresses that you see her in have those, and they're offset. Like this side goes all the way over to the other side instead of coming to the center. And then we'll do the top, and it'll kind of come down over the waistband so you don't see this part up at the top. Okay, so next part is to cut out and add this loopy layer. And what I'm going to do is use the same pattern that I used for the skirt and just make it a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, and then I'll gather it up at different intervals and put it on top of, of this layer. Alright, so that'll be the next step. Hang in there. 
Okay, so back to the um, first layer we're going to put down. I cut this piece a little bit bigger than the original skirt pattern. And I kept this part almost the same width. Uh, it's a little bit bigger because it's going to have to go on top of it. And what I'm going to do is fold it down and hem it and sew it to that bottom layer on the dress. And then for the rest of this, what I've done is mark sections off. And what I want to do is run a gathering thread. So I'm going to... Whoop, that's too far. All right, so I want to turn this under so that when it gathers, there will be a, a finished edge instead of leaving it like that. All right, so... The thing is to remember what angle you're going to go at, and this one will be going straight up. So I'm going to run back and forth at the beginning to lock it. And then I'm going to go up about halfway up the skirt. And then we'll just stop and leave extra thread so that you can pull it and it'll look now this one you can trim because we went back and forth with the thread so it's locked so it's going to look kind of like that and then I'm going to go on the other side of the front and do the same thing So I just wanted to show you that part on camera. Uh, now I'm going to put some gathers uh, on either side of these two gathers and then do the gathers on the back of the skirt and I'll be back. Okay, I've done the gathers on both the front and the back and I wanted to show you that these two in the front pretty much come straight up towards the waist. However, the ones on the side is angled in just a little bit because it won't look symmetrical if you make it go like th at that angle. So you want it to be more like this angle. Alright, so then what we do, because these are locked, we can cut these, these bottom threads and then we're just going to go along and pull the top to make that ruche look down at the bottom of the uh, overskirt rid of this. We don't need those. So we just keep pulling. Okay. So now we've got that look, which is what we wanted. And I've done already done the back part as well. Now, to lock this part in place, we're going to put the, uh, the sewing machine back on the smaller stitch. And we're just going to stitch over top of the gathering thread. So I'll do one on camera and then you guys can be, you guys can um, take a break and I'll finish sewing off camera. Okay. Okay, so we've sewed both the front and the back, and these are locked into place. Now before I sew the side seams on this, I want to put a little decoration on these top of these gathers. Um, in the one, in the picture that I showed you earlier, I think they had bows and maybe some gold tassels, but I'm going to use these little um, satin flowers that uh, you can purchase. I think you can purchase these at Michael's probably is where I got these. And um, I also wanted to show you that I did off camera 
add some trim to the bottom of this part of the dress. And you'll be shocked to learn that I didn't glue it on with E6000. I actually hand sewed it. <laughs> but I found this at a thrift store. A whole bag of this stuff. It was like five yards of it or something for three bucks. And I just thought it would go well with this dress. And also the design of it reminds me of that sort of Rococo era perhaps a little bit and uh, so I just hand sewed that on and then we're going to put this over skirt you know over this part so to decorate this a little bit more I want to put the the little flowers on and yay I am going to glue those on I don't want to sew those on. <laughs> so you do get to see me use some E6000 alright so I'm just going to glue put a glob of the glue right there and place a flower right over the seam. It'll help disguise the seam a little bit too and then just add some decoration because they had quite a bit of decoration on those dresses. Alright, so I'm going to do this rest of this off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, now that I've sewed the side seams and turned it right side out and then I did him this upper portion Let's put it over the doll's head and see how it looks over top of this underdress. Okay, so this is where we are right now. We've got the gathered part done. So now I'm going to attach this at the top here with, guess what, glue. Yeah, I'm going to just put some glue around here to hold this on. And then I'm uh, going to work on two drapes, one here, well, I put one on this side and then one lower because I like that sort of asymmetrical drape look and uh, that'll, that'll cover up all of this. And then we can start working on the top, okay? So I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so this is mostly dry and I'm going to start working on the, the side panels. To do that, I cut two pieces in this shape. It's sort of an oval shape that's flat on one top on the top part and comes in sort of like that. And then the other piece is uh, a little bit bigger so there'll be a they'll be a little bit asymmetrical. And then what I'm going to do is run a gathering stretch gathering stitch across the top and around the bottom. Now this is the bigger one that I cut, just so you can see how it looks after I've gathered it. This is the straight part. So what we'll do is uh, we'll put the, the smaller one on first after I sew it, and then attach this over here, and then I'll gather this a little bit more so that it, it looks right, and um, overlap this piece over the smaller one. So I'm going to go ahead, go ahead off camera and gather this one up, and then show you how it looks after I put them together. Okay, so I finished the smaller one, and that's going to go on this side, and I just pinned it where I'm going to sew it down. So you can see, I've also, I'm also on either side of that opening in the back, so I'll be able to still get the dress off, I think. <laughs> it's getting, this dress is getting really complicated. Alright, so that's one side poof, and now for the other side poof, drop this a little closer. I want to attach to this one so that it comes over to the side of this, like that. Okay, so it's, uh, this one's longer and comes over to the side. This one connects in the middle and is shorter. And then when we get this finished with the top, I'm going to put a bow right here at the junction of this. All right. So I'm going to actually go in and sew this down to the bottom skirt. And I'll be right back. Okay. Now that we have the side panels on, I did do a little gather here and a gather here and a gather here. And added some more of those rosettes. And... So this is how it's looking at this point. The back, I didn't put the rosettes in, and I left it 
so that I can open it if I need to. All right. At this point, we're, we're going to start working on the bodice. And one thing I am a little concerned about, let's see if I can pull this up a little bit, is you know, I've added three layers to this waist here. <laughs> and I'm not sure this is going to go around it. But we're going to give it a try. It's going to be close. All right, so we'll set the doll aside over here. Get all my pieces together. The first thing we'll do is to sew the two pieces of the front together and turn them. We're going to sew them at the neck and at the bottom. And I'm going to round this point off just a little bit because I think it might not look too good with all that gathered material. So let's do that. I'm going to put some little slits in here. So when we turn it, it'll be smooth. And now we're going to do the same thing up here. I took it. Okay. So we're going to also make some slits here. And then we'll turn it. And that'll be sort of like a lined piece for the bodice front. And if you wanted to, you could actually go around and sew this by hand to hold it down and also um, maybe iron it. It's probably going to be okay, I think, but those are some things that you could do to make that stay flat. So that's our top part. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the two back pieces. And... I'll do that off camera, and I want to show you what I'm going to do to the sleeve. I have more of this lace. Now, on the bottom, I turned this part down so that it, it looked like that around the bottom, but for this, I'm going to gather it, so I'm going to actually let that uh, lace part show, and then run a gathering thread across the top of it. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and run a gathering thread around here so we can fit it to the sleeve hole in the bodice. Okay, and we'll sew the side sleeve side seats when we sew up the sides of the bodice, so we'll just leave that for now, but I'm going to go ahead and and gather that, and I'll leave this ungathered for now because it'll be easier to sew with it not gathered. All right, so I'm going to do a few of these things, and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so we're back. I finished sewing the bodice and put the sleeves in, and boy, were these sleeves hard to turn with all this stuff on them through those little tiny sleeve hole. <laughs> but I got them. I did it. And I also put a, a bow here with a Swarovski crystal, as you can see. That's to sort of accent the place where the, the these two panels join on her hip. Put a couple of little bows on the front with crystals on those. And uh, this is the basic dress. I may do a little bit more up here to decorate uh, these dresses were, were pretty elaborate, so I may do a little bit more of that, but I can do that at the end when we do our final touches. And uh, the as far as the back goes, um, I just pinned it for now. I'm going to have to re-sew this so that I can put the Velcro on it, but I'll do that off camera. So I just wanted to let you see the final product at this point, and I hope you, hope you enjoyed it. I'll do a couple of still pictures for you, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this this video. I enjoyed making this dress. It was a little tedious, but um, I did, did enjoy it, and I think it turned out well. Oh, I gave her a ring, too. <laughs> little diamond ring. 
So here's a still shot of the final dress, just so you can get a better look. And as usual, stay tuned for the next part of the series. We'll be making her some pantaloons and some hose. And then we'll move on to the face up and the hair for the final pieces and then a few finishing touches. So we have several more videos left in this series and I hope you're enjoying it. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thanks and bye.